It's likely the whole reason you're even considering a stepper motor or a servo motor is because of the high level of positional control. As an example, I've got this motor wired such that when I push this button, it moves 0.18 degrees. That means I've got 2000 positions per rotation. It's pretty incredible. But just like everything else in engineering, there's a trade-off. You're not gonna be able to just plug this guy into the wall and flip a switch on. You're gonna need some specialized hardware as well as do some programming. But you shouldn't let that intimidate you. I'm gonna walk you through all of the hardware that you need as well as how to write the program. In fact, I've written most of it for you. Let's start with the stepper motor itself. These guys come in a huge range of sizes, as you can see here, and they often have what's called a NEMA designation. NEMA is a standard with the primary mission of making it so that you can use motors from different manufacturers that will fit in the same spot. In this case, uh, NEMA 34, which is what this motor is, tells you about the dimensions of the faceplate. This one happens to be 3.4 inches. This one's NEMA 23 or 2.3 inches and so on. But there are actually more numbers to the NEMA designation which tell you things like the size of the shaft and the length of the motor, which can all vary. For example, here's another NEMA 23. And as you can see, while they have the same faceplate size, the shaft sizes are significantly different. And even looking at the mounting holes, these mounting holes are smaller. Not to mention the motor itself is much less powerful and much smaller. Now, these larger motors, which is what we're gonna focus on today, usually have four wires. And if I'm remembering these correctly, most of the time the designation is black and green for the A winding and blue and red for the B winding. Although that's not always the case, sometimes the colors are mixed up or sometimes they even use different colors like this one doesn't even have a black wire. So again, this is information that's gonna be specific to the stepper motor that you buy from that specific manufacturer. Now these little guys will often have five or even six wires, as you can see here. You can usually drive these with these same bigger drives, but the way you wire is gonna be a little bit different. And depending upon which wire you connect to what terminal, you're gonna get different performance characteristics. Some will give you lower speeds and more torque and vice versa. But because of the variability and options, I'll let you look at the manual and we'll just cover the four wire setup today. Now here's where things get interesting. In order to get this motor to move the right distance, you're gonna to need to supply power to one or both windings with the right polarity and in the right order. That can get pretty complicated. So most of the time we use a controller to do this automatically. Here we have a few examples of stepper motor controllers that I happen to have laying around my shop. The same way we have different size steppers, we need different size drivers in order to match the current limits of the particular motor. This one doesn't require very much current and therefore the pins and wiring can be significantly smaller. Now, even though these drives look very different, they're all pretty much identical in the way that they function and the way that they're wired. And we're gonna talk more about wiring later, but there's one thing I wanna point out now. You do need to make sure that the drive is capable of handling the power needs of the motor. Usually the drives come with a range and then you adjust the current setting to match your motor. And that's what all of this information is here on the top. There's a list which allows you to adjust how many steps there are per revolution. That is how many positions the motor can stop at per rotation and also you need to set the current limit. In this case, you can see here on the label, it says 5.6 amps. So I need to set this drive to 5.6 amps. Why does it need to be 5.6? Because if you set it too high, the motor's gonna overheat and burn itself out. The motor will pull as much current as it can. If you set it too low, you're not gonna get the full performance of the motor. This particular model has dip switches on the side, and this one also has dip switches, although they are really tiny down there in the inside. This one, if I remember correctly, there's a little potentiometer, there it is right there, and you adjust that with the screwdriver. In my case, I wanna match the RMS current, and that's 5.6 amps. So that tells me that dip switch one, two, and three all need to be in the off position. Driving this motor to its full potential, I'm gonna to need to adjust these switches all to the off position like so. So at this point, we've got our stepper motor, which is going to position our load. We've got our driver, which knows how to control the stepper, but we also need to tell the driver what to do. You see, the driver can control the stepper, but it doesn't know how fast to go, it doesn't know how far to go. We need something to control the driver also. I like to think of this as sort of a symphony. The stepper motor is our violin, the driver is our violinist, and we need somebody to conduct this symphony. In that case, that's going to be our Arduino. An Arduino is a programmable microcontroller. I like to think of it as just a tiny computer where I can write out instructions 
and it will run that program over and over and over again until I turn it off. There are other microcontrollers as well, like I'm using a Raspberry Pi to automate my table saw. This guy can control multiple stepper motors, sending commands to our drivers who will play our instruments. In any case, you're gonna need something to send instructions to our controller. One more thing I wanna say about the physical connections of the Arduino before we start wiring things. As you can see here on the top, it's got these little pinholes, which is where you push all the wires in to make your connections. Now, that's fantastic for prototyping on your bench top and you know, little toy projects or training with your kids, but I absolutely hate those little tiny pinholes. I want something more robust than that. So what I normally do is buy something like this. This is another Arduino Mega. And this is called a shield. It's a screw terminal shield. It essentially converts all those pins to screw terminals. And that's gonna be way more robust. In fact, you can see it's got the DIN rail mount, which is what you would find in most industrial cabinets. So this is what I use for all my projects, but it is by no means required. Anyway, I'll put links to all this stuff in the description if you wanna use that yourself. The last component you're gonna need is some kind of power supply. This particular one is 60 volts and it falls right into the range to match my drives. This one can take anywhere from 24 to 80. I think this one's 18 to 80. It is. The important thing is that the voltage matches your drive and that it can handle the current limits of each or all of your stepper motors if you're driving multiple stepper motors. Continuing with our orchestra analogy, our violinist knows what song to play we just need to control how fast to play it and when to start and stop. Similarly, our drive needs to be told when to move from one position to the next and which direction to go, whether it's going clockwise or counterclockwise. Those are really the only two inputs we need to give to the drive. It's gonna do everything else. Down here at the bottom, you're gonna always see the four leads for your motor. So let's go ahead and connect those. Now, I use these for prototyping around the shop. So rather than look up what colors do what each time, I usually just write it right here on the side of the motor. I've already set our RMS current to 5.6 amps, which means the first three dip switches are all off, and they are. Number four controls whether you want half the current or the full current. Whenever I have a stepper motor that's not working very hard in a stopped position, for example, if I'm moving a load laterally, and then when it stops, it doesn't take very much power from the motor to hold it there, I'll put this setting on half. That'll keep your motor a little bit cooler, but it also puts out less torque from the motor. So if you're holding something up vertically and you need the full torque of the motor, you're gonna wanna leave this switch set on full power. Five, six, seven, and eight control the steps per revolution. We're gonna set ours to 400 so that it's easy to see the motor moving. And in that case, they should all be on. So five, six, seven, and eight are all in the on position. Next, we have our enable pins. And this can come in two configurations. It can be enabled by default or disabled by default. And what I mean by that is in this case, it's enabled by default. If there's no voltage across these pins, then the drive will work. If I supply five volts across these two pins for this particular drive, that actually turns off power to the motor and you can freely spin the motor. But every once in a while, it's the other way around. It's disabled by default. And when you supply five volts, that actually enables the drive, which means if you want it to work, you're gonna to need to keep five volts across those pins continuously. Finally, we have our pulse pins. And sometimes it'll say step, like this one says step instead of pulse, but it's exactly the same thing. Essentially, when you supply five volts here and then remove it, that's a full cycle. The voltage goes on and then off. The motor will move one step forward. Changing those pins, as I showed you earlier, can make that increment apparently as small as 50,000, which is insane. This drive requires 24 to 80 volts, so I'm gonna turn on my power supply and we'll set it to 48 volts. I've got this switch wired in between my five volt power supply, which is just a little wall wart that's plugged into the floor, and this switch. So when I push this switch, you see that the motor moves 1 400th of a rotation. Of course, pushing a button like this is insane, right? You wouldn't wanna have to control this system like this. Not only can you not push it fast enough to get decent speeds, we also wanna automate the control of the direction and things like that. What we're gonna do is program this microcontroller to push the buttons for us. And of course, this can push the button way faster than we possibly could. So let's take a look at how we can write our control scheme out 
and have an Arduino do it for us. Digging around, I found a smaller Arduino. This is the Arduino Uno, or a knockoff version of it. We're gonna use this one since this one's a little cheaper than the other one for our demonstration. You're gonna to need to start by downloading some software. I'll put a link to this in the description, but you're gonna to go to Arduino's website, come over and download the appropriate version for the computer that you're using. You have an option to donate or just download. I've already got this downloaded, but you'll download and install this software. Then, we're gonna open the Arduino software. And here you're looking at the code that we're gonna be using today. Now, my goal is not to teach you how to write code from scratch. In fact, I've only been writing code for a few months myself, but I do wanna show you how to generally read through what I've given you so that you have something to start with. This first line basically tells it to install the Excel stepper library. And then we define some pins. These numbers here represent physical pins on the Arduino. Over here, I'm giving names to those pins so that later on I can call up those names instead of calling up the pin numbers. This is really important for very long codes. If I want to change this pin for some reason and use pin number nine instead of pin number five, then I've got to chase down every place in my code where I use pin number five and change it. If I do it this way, all I have to do is change the pin here, and everywhere it says stepper one pulse, uh, it will automatically know what pin number to use. Then I go on to define some terms down here, motor one speed, motor two position, because I'm controlling them differently. And you can see the rest of the terms there for minimum speed, maximum speed, and so on. When it comes to Excel stepper, it's got three parameter inputs. This first input tells you what kind of control scheme we're using. The number one indicates that we're using a stepper driver. The second input is gonna be what pin is receiving the pulse input. You see I'm using the name, but what that actually tells it is to use pin number five because I'm using the name stepper one pulse. Same for direction. The second input is gonna be the direction input. I'm using two different steppers, so I'm calling the first one step one and the second one step two. So now Excel stepper knows that when I call for step one, these are the parameters to use. And when I call for step two, these are the parameters to use. Then we go down to void setup. This part of the program will only run when it first initializes. It's going to set our max speed, set speed, acceleration, and so on for these different parameters. After we tell the Excel stepper library what these parameters are, we need to tell the Arduino how to use these pins. So we have pin mode, and that's the pin number. We're setting that as an output. That just lets the Arduino know that it's gonna be sending information out on that pin instead of trying to receive information. You could put input here as well. And then so on for the other pins. And then I've got digital write in the setup which tells it to set these pins to zero volts or low. And this one's set to five volts. Then we get down to the void loop which is relatively short because this program is pretty simple. The first thing in our void loop is motor one speed, which we initially started at zero, but now we're gonna tell it to read the potentiometer instead. The Arduino is gonna immediately convert the position of the potentiometer to a number between zero and 1023. I wanna change that to numbers between speed min and speed max. And those are variables I set up here above for pulses per second. And you can make that number whatever you want. When I turn the potentiometer up to max, the Arduino is gonna read that as 1023, and then it's gonna translate that to 4000 based on the numbers I've input it here. Immediately after that, I'm gonna tell the Excel stepper library to use the motor speed one that I just mapped and make that to speed, so set speed. Next, we're gonna tell it to start running at that speed, and that's it for the first motor. And then the second motor, I'm doing something very similar. Now you're gonna notice that this one says run speed and this one just says run. That's actually a quirk from the Excel stepper library. When you wanna move the position of a motor, you use the run command. And when you wanna change the speed of a motor, you use run speed. In fact, let's take a quick look at the website where you can see all of the inputs that you can get from the Excel stepper library. This shows you everything that the Excel stepper library can do, all the parameters, how to set them up, and even if you don't understand exactly what something does, basically what I did as an experiment is I will put it in my code and see what it does. And you'll quickly figure out what all these things do and how to use them to write your code. This part of the code will run over and over again very rapidly. So each time I change the position of the potentiometer, all of this happens over and over again. 
it's going to recheck the potentiometer, change the speed, start running the motor. If you've never used the Excel stepper library before, you will need to install that first. So we're gonna go up here to sketch, include library, manage libraries. And then up here at the top, we'll do a search, Excel stepper. Here it is. Now mine is already installed, but you would just select a version you want and click install. Once you've done that, you can load this guy to your Arduino. And you do that by simply hitting upload. Now there's one more thing to think about here, and that is if there's a problem with your sketch, for example, if this is missing, you can hit verify and it'll tell me there's a problem. And what that means down here it looks like the wrong line is highlighted, but I learned that it usually means that something right before that is the problem. And in this case, the semicolon is missing. Each line has to end with a semicolon. Now, I have pre-wired this to another shield, another screw terminal shield for the Arduino Uno. But what I'll do instead of showing you all these wires, which is kind of messy, I'm gonna draw out a diagram for you and just put that on the screen. At this point, we've got our code uploaded to our Arduino and I'm just powering it from the PC. You could also use a nine volt plug like this with a battery. You could even get one of those wall adapters and plug it in the wall made for Arduino. Any of those options will work. It does not have to stay connected to the PC. So here's our position pot. And I know that this guy will go about 75% of the way around. And this controller is set to 2000 steps per revolution. So as you see in the program, I set it to about 1600 and that should get me really close. Sure looks like it is. <laughs> All right, that's more fun than it should be. So that's that. And then we have speed control on this side. So this is a plugged into A0. And here we have speed control with the potentiometer. And I also want you to notice that I've got some acceleration built into this one. And you can see it's speeding up and slowing down as it goes through its positions. And these numbers are totally adjustable, right? If we go to our code, acceleration for stepper two is set to a thousand right now. Let's make it 10,000. Now that the acceleration is turned all the way up, you don't get a chance to see it speeding up and slowing down. But you get the idea, this is easy to adjust. So this shows you how to control the primary parameters that you probably wanna have control over, speed, acceleration, and position. But there are gonna be other parameters that you wanna control as well. Like for example, say you had a camera on a track and you wanted to run until it hits the end of the track, maybe a limit switch, and when it hits that switch, it knows to go the other direction. Well, I can't show you all the possible variations, but there are a lot of sample codes in here. For example, if we go to File, Examples, Excel Stepper, there's one called Bounce, I think is the one, there it is. So if we look at Bounce, Bounce pretty much does what I just described. Instead of hitting a limit switch though, it just goes a fixed number of steps and then it turns around. But there's no reason you can't cut and paste little snippets of pieces that you need to get the code that you want. Now I'm a fairly new coder myself. In fact, I've only been doing this for a few months, that is writing code in C++ and in Python. But my goal in telling you that is to let you know that this is approachable, even though things like leaving off a semicolon will frustrate you to death trying to figure out what's wrong. When you get it, it is totally worth it. Now this video is actually the first in a series of videos that I'm gonna be doing on robotics and automation for beginners. And my plan is to make things like servo motors and act linear actuators. I wanna make that stuff approachable to somebody who's interested, but doesn't quite know how to bridge that gap yet. So there's a lot more to come. You should hit that subscribe button if you're interested in that kind of content. I also wanna say thank you to these fine people who are scrolling up your screen. These are patrons who have been supporting the channel. It's you guys who make it possible for me to make this kind of content free on YouTube. And for that, I am so grateful. I hope to see you guys in the next video, which will be about Actually, I don't know which one's coming next, but it's coming soon. So stay tuned and thanks for watching.